When did you decide you were going to get into MMA? When did you know this is the sport I want to go down? As a um, little kid I was, or after Yeah, Olympics? as a kid, I, I feel like I was, uh, when I was in eighth grade, I remember like as a family, we would, we would, uh, they had them at the Hollywood videos of Randall Stone. We would, you know, I saw it, you know, we saw it for the first time. We kind of started running the videos and we kind of kept up with it. And I liked it. I remember seeing Mark Coleman, uh, a, a lot of these, you know, Kevin Randleman, and Randy Couture. Oh, you were uh, really young then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was a, I was a puppy, man. I was probably 13 years old, maybe 14. I was, I was, I was a kid. Sure. Mark I was a kid. Kerr. And, yeah. Mark Kerr. Yeah. The Smashing Machine. Uh, and I was like, damn, and I liked it. And this was, you know, so this was, this was back in 99 to, no, I'm sorry. This was back in 2000, 2000, 2001. Sure. And I just knew that that was just the next step after fighting. So I had already kind of had it in my mind. Okay, this is what I'm going to do after wrestling. But uh, once I won the Olympics, it's almost like that competitor. It's almost like I wasn't sure if I wanted to do that. I just, you know, I accomplished everything. And uh, but there was still that competitor in me. Right. And uh, it, it, it took a while to kind of spark that fire to be, you know, to like, you know what? I'm going to I want to become a world champion in this. And I just I submerged myself, child, like it was. Uh, and, and everything that I do, I've, I've, everything that I've ever set my mind to, I've, I've, I've accomplished. You know, it's not too many people can say that for man, sure. But it's because of it's remarkable. It's, it's because of wrestling. It's because of the, the, you know, the the strength that it has given me. The grind, the the humbleness of losing of any given day, man. You take a break, man. This dude, this your own training partner will take you out. When you decided to go that route, did you get any pushback from Terry Brands? Um, <laughs> I don't think he liked it. I don't think he liked it. But now, uh, now it is crazy because we fast forward it. Now, every time I fight, he always sends me a text. Really? And he has no idea how special that is to me. That is very cool. He has no idea. But every time I see him, I, every time I see a text from him, I expect it now. I'm like, damn, Terry's watching. Now, isn't it a little weird that the two roughest guys in the history of our sport of wrestling do kind of keep fighting at an arm's reach. I mean, we don't see a lot of the Iowa guys come in. We don't see those two. I mean, those two would be welcomed in. They get front row tickets. They don't see. It's like, this is what you guys do. You do it on the mat. You're doing it when it's not even within the rules. Yeah. I would think if anybody got behind this sport, it'd be the brands boys. But I'm wrong. Yeah, well, I think that's probably why. Because they are, they're already doing it. Like, sure. it's not about money for them. It's not about fame. It's about... It's it, in their eyes. It's like wrestling's the the most purest, oldest, toughest, and they're right. But they 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 take it to that extreme one. Sure. This is it. It's wrestling or nothing. It's you life. You know. It's almost like yeah, wrestling is life, man. You know, poor Nelson, Terry's boy is in yeah. the room. I say poor Nelson. I would yeah. only imagine that'd be hard. But but maybe it's not. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how Terry mentors him or keeps him. I, I don't yeah. know how that works. Yeah. But. He's in the Iowa room, and quite frankly, he's entered two tournaments already this year. He's redshirting, so uh -huh. opens. He won them both. Yeah. Beat Hammers, too. Yeah. Yeah, he's, uh, he has Terry's genetics, man. I remember him as a kid. I remember him as a as a nine-year-old, ten-year-old kid. I remember babysitting him because Terry would, you know, every once in a while, I was like, I was just super close with him. And he was like, hey, you can take care of my kids. Like, he trusted me. I was like, that was 20 year old kid all right Terry. <laughs> <laughs> i'll do my best i can order a pizza. and holy shit man i would play with that kid man i would leave tired i would leave that house tired really man. yeah and you can tell like he just had the same little face that when terry would get mad i'm just like shit man <laughs> so the, the, the kid is the, the kid is special man i think i think part of part of that you would you would you know through nature and nurture sure look at who his dad is and look at it it's in them King Mo claims when he was living at the Olympic training. Center, King Mo's so funny. Sometimes <laughs> I don't know when he's storytelling or if it really happened. I, I just laugh every time he tells me a story. But he said that Terry Brands would, would, would give you guys, uh, you know, like a morning off. Uh, tomorrow morning's off. So that was the cue for the guys. Oh, we can go out tonight. We can play around. King Mo said they would come back and Terry Brands would be in a tree with binoculars <laughs> and taking notes of when everybody came back to the training center. Did that happen? Man, I tell you what, I was such a good kid, I never went out. But uh, Would you believe that story's true? Shit, kind of. King Mo said he was in the cafeteria at the OTC <laughs> one day, and he was having an orange pop, a Fanta. You know the yeah, orange? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Terry Brands comes over and goes, what's that? And Mo says, orange pop. And he said nothing else about it. Brand said nothing else about it. He said three months later, 
They were in like Hungary at a tournament. Yeah. Mo gets beat 6-5, loses by one point. Yeah. Terry Brands comes up to him and says, that orange soda came back a bitch in the ass, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say it laughing, though. I didn't tell the story right. You know how intense he would have said it. That orange yeah. soda came back and bitch in the ass, didn't it? And walked off. That was it. Yeah. No. Three months later. Yeah. No, I know. And he's, uh, <laughs> he's, Terry Browns is a trip, man. Probably the most passionate guy I think I've ever met. Just passionate, man. Like people, people think his rage that he has, but it's really, it's, it's, it's passion. And I remember him calling me. He's like freaking 12 sometimes. I mean, just late at night, I'd be like, world champ. Click. That's it. That's it. Does he That's need to it. say anything else? I'm just. That's like, awesome. Fuck. I'm getting ready to go to sleep. Are you really gonna? <laughs> you really gonna sleep. do this to me? Could have been asleep. And I'm for like, that and I'm like Terry. Terry. <laughs> like I know it's him, but yeah, I'm like, right, caller ID. 